In this presentation we're going to take a look at the mathematical description of the frequency response of the system. So once again we have some system um, but it's just shown as a black box here uh, but the frequency response is defined mathematically by this expression. Uh, this is the convention used to define uh, the frequency response. So frequency response is by convention labelled as H and it's shown as a function of frequency omega in terms of radians per second. And this is just one example over here on the right hand side of uh, a system frequency response defined mathematically. And what I'm going to do is just show you how to determine the magnitude and phase response from this mathematical description. And we're going to plot them down in these plots down here. Here's the phase is going to go here and the magnitude is going to go here. Um, now the the expressions for the frequency response of a system can become quite complex. There can be plenty of terms in it, but the basic process I'm going to show you here is applied no matter what frequency response you have. Um, basically you need to evaluate this expression for all the values of omega that you're interested in. So I've already done those calculations and I'll just bring them up. Um, here we go. So here's a table. So I have evaluated this expression for different values of omega. So I've substituted omega for omega equal to 0 radians per second, 10 radians per second, 20 radians per second, 50 and 100. And when I did that, when I substituted these values into this expression, I got these values, these complex numbers. And of course I got complex numbers back because the frequency response has this imaginary term in here in the denominator. Um, now, um, once I get the have evaluated h of omega, I need to determine the magnitudes which I place in this column, this column here, and the phase values are all in the final column over here. Um, so I need these values in order to plot the magnitude and phase responses. Now, on these plots here, I've also uh, these each of these points here corresponds to the frequency values in the table. So just let me um, sketch in the scale. So uh, we're dealing with radians per second here rather than hertz. So that's 100 and that's 50 radians per second. That's same down here, 150. Um, and each of these points here was obtained from the table. Now if I interpolate it between those plots and uh, or drew a curve between those plots uh, those points, I would get these uh, lines here, the yellow lines, which are the they're the ma uh, phase response up here and the magnitude response of this system, which is defined mathematically here to have this frequency response. Okay, so now we're in a uh, have the the frequency res response presented in a way that you're more familiar with. Um, and of course this can be done no matter what definition of the frequency response you have. What I'd like to do now is just run through a quick example. Um, so we'll show um, an input like we've done before. So I'm going to plot the frequency content of an input and when that system, uh, when that um, this, the signal we're going to define is passed through the system, so it's going to go into the system. Um, let's get rid of the calculations. Um, that's going to come out of the system and we'll see what the frequency content of the output is in terms of magnitude and phase. So in our example let's just use a very simple example. We'll say there's two sinusoids. One of the sinusoids will be at 10 radians per second and the other one at 50. Um, the amplitude of the 10 radians per second will give an amplitude of 50 and the amplitude of the 50 radians per second component we will give an amplitude of 100. Um, that means we're going to get um, a, 50 a 10 radians per second component out and a 50 radians per second component out. Now, in terms of the, f the amplitudes of the sinusoids, we just need to look at the magnitude response to determine the magnitudes of the output. So the 10 radians per second component, um, well the scales have been removed, let's just put those in again. Sorry, that should be 100. Be 100. Um, the 10 radians per second component looking at the magnitude response will be amplified by 0 0.7. So the output 
of 10 radians per second should be 35. And for the 50 radians per second it has one, an amplitude of 100 going into the system. So coming out of the system, looking at the magnitude response, the magnitudes will be amplified by 0 0.2. Now I'm also recalling the calculations because these graphs aren't that brilliantly drawn. Uh, so the output will be 20. Okay. So that's the uh, amplitudes dealt with. Now let's take a look at the phase. Now um, I should have all, I should have put this in already, but let's assume that the input phase was pi over two at 10 radians per second, and at 50 radians per second, we'll give it minus pi over two. Um, now, what happens to the phases? Well, we have to look at the phase response of the system then, and we know that the phase response adds a phase shift. So the phase response at 10 radians per second was uh, about 0.8. Just looking at the 10 radians per second component. Now I'm also recalling the calculations. So the output then is going to be pi over 2, which is 1.57 plus 8, which would be um, 2.37. So 2.37. Let's just plot it in like that. It should be quite pi. It's going up too high, that one. There we go, that'll do. And uh, the 50 radians per second component, well, it had an amplitude of um, minus pi, sorry, it had a phase of minus pi over 2. And uh, the 50 radians per second uh, component, uh, the graph doesn't look great, but the 50 radians per second recalling from the calculations uh, was, was shy of pi over 2. Um, I'm not quite sure how much, but let's say it was about point. Um, well, let's say 1.5. Okay, let's let's assume that it was 1.5. I'll check the calculations later on. So that would give a phase shift. Then it was minus pi over two going in, plus a phase shift of 1.5 would give a, a phase value then of minus 0 0.7 roughly. We'll just show it like that. So there's uh, some plots of the frequency content. Um, now just to sort of wrap everything up mathematically, what I'd like to show you now is the um, the mathematical description of that. Rather than showing it as plots, we'll show the mathematical description. So let's remove the graphs and we'll write out the frequency content of the input. Well, we'll define the, the, the input signal mathematically. We'll define it in the time domain now, because we know that it's made up of two sinusoids. So it was made up of a, let's see, it was a 10 radian per second component, a 10 radian per second component with a phase shift of pi over 2, and it had an amplitude of 50. And the input was added with another sinusoid, which had an amplitude of 100, and a frequency of 50, and had a phase shift of minus pi over 2. So that signal is going into the system. And um, I'm just going to bring up the calculations again. Okay, so what I'd like to see now is, well, what happens to that signal mathematically? So we're just going to sketch the frequency, or sorry, the mathematical description of the output, because we know how the sinusoids are going to be modified by the system. Now by convention, the output is labeled as y of t, so y of t is going to be equal to uh, well, I know it's going to be a sinusoid, and I know it's going to be uh, 10t uh, frequency, so t that's 10 radians per second um, frequency. Um, but what happens to the amplitude? So it was 50 going in, and 10 radians per second component, we've already done the calculations, multiplied by 0 0.707. Uh, now I'll just round, I'm going to bring that to 35, okay. Um, so I've, I've rounded that a little bit. Uh, plus pi over 2, which is uh, 1.57, um, with this phase shift of uh, 0 0.78, so 1.57 plus uh, 0 0.78 will be 2.28. 2.28. And the other component, the other sinusoidal component, well, 
it has a frequency of 50 and I've done the calculation of h of omega for omega equal to 50 already so its magnitude is uh, going to be changed by 0 0.196 so we multiply the amplitude which is was 100 by 0 0.196 so it's going to be uh, 19.6 cos frequency of this component doesn't change so it's still 50 and the phase shift was minus 1.57 and we're going to add 1.37 to it. So minus, this from the phase over here, minus 1.57 plus 1.37 gives you um, minus 0 0.2 of a phase shift. And that's the output defined mathematically.